everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. It is time for a new project and totally new era and everything than we have been doing recently because we are going back to vintage style in this project and this is one that I've been wanting to do for a while. In fact, ever since I saw this new pattern get released, this is a simplicity pattern Mine is numbered 11333, but I think that it has different numbering depending on if you buy it off the table versus if you buy it in the drawer. And I bought mine off the table. So this is a 1940s pattern. It is just so, so cute with a gathered skirt with a ruffle, because of course I'm doing the one with the ruffle. And I also really like this sweetheart neckline. And then we've got a little bit of a puffed sleeve. So super, super cute. This is the view that I'm doing. However, I am going to be making a few alterations to this. So of course I am gonna be altering for fit. I've already looked at the bodice and I think the only alteration that I need to make hopefully, is to extend the front shoulder strap by about an inch. I'm hoping that that's all I'll need, and then I'll just kind of go from there and see. But of course, the ease on this pattern, like all simplicity patterns, is ridiculous. This is supposed to be a size 24. It's supposed to have a 46 inch bust. This pattern has a finished measurement of 51 inches for the bust. So I am going to cut a size 24, but I think we will be cutting down significantly from there because my bust is smaller than the size 22. Simplicity. Can we stop with the ease? Can we just stop? Like, we don't want this. Anyway, I am also excited about this because I wanted to do this as a stash project, but I don't have a lot of longer lengths of fabric in my stash. I had really hoped, I've got some beautiful Japanese print cotton sateen. I was really hoping I could get this out of that, but I think there's just no way. I've only got about like three yards of both of those. And according to the pattern instructions, this is gonna call for three and three eighths yards or no, three and three quarters yards. So. I really don't think so, especially because I am intending to make this a fuller skirt. This right now is just two straight panels, one front panel, one back panel, and then the ruffle below it. And actually view A, which is the one that I'm doing with the ruffle, you shorten the skirt and then add the ruffle and it winds up, uh, looks like on the picture, being about knee length. I don't want a knee length skirt, I want a longer skirt. And most likely I want a fuller skirt up at the top too. So I'll probably be making changes on that on both fronts. But this is the cute fabric that I'm using. I figure 1940s movie, 1940s dress, it kind of works. So I'm going to go work on the mock-up, but before I do that, let's go over to Sponsor Rebecca for a little word from today's sponsor. Thank you, Sewing Rebecca. Sponsor Rebecca here, and today's video is once again kindly sponsored by Skillshare. If you've been around my channel, you have heard me talk about Skillshare before, but if you haven't yet heard of Skillshare, it is an online learning community for creative and curious people. On Skillshare, you can find thousands of inspiring classes on topics including photography, art, productivity, cooking, and even sewing. Lately, I've been wanting to be better about budgeting and keeping track of my finances, and it turns out that Skillshare even has classes on that too. One that I found super helpful in setting up a monthly budget and then keeping track of my spending and income was the class called Learn How to Budget, Personal Budgeting Made Easy in 16 Minutes, taught by Brainy Money and Sun Han. This class provides you with an in-depth budget template using Google Sheets, and it walks you through how to fill out the spreadsheet and how to read all of the numbers that it then calculates. This class is delineated into a different chapter for each page of the spreadsheet, with reminders to go fill out your own spreadsheet once he's covered that page. It was super helpful, and I already can tell that I'm keeping way better track of my accounts than I was before. I love that Skillshare classes come in all sorts of different lengths, like this quick one or other more in-depth classes on the same topic, and it's really easy to pause, rewind, or rewatch classes as often as you like. Plus, you can save classes that you want to take in the future to your profile so that you can come back and watch those classes later. And the great news is that the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link down in the description box below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so that you can explore your limitless creativity. And now, back to Sewing Rebecca. 
So just a quick note on pattern alteration before I actually go into the mock-up. Basically the front and back panels, they're the same. So I'm just using one and not the other. I am also making my front and back panels 25 inches long as opposed to that's like kind of in between view A and view B because I wanted a longer skirt. So mine's gonna be 25 inches long and then plus the ruffle. And then I think I'm also going to cut three of them. I'm not sure if I still love the idea about the fact that they're all straight panels, but like, oh well. But basically I did the math on that and having all of those pieces together, including the sleeve and the bodice and the ruffle, which you need extra ruffle, you need four and a half ruffles if you're gonna have three skirt panels it means that I need 4.7 yards of fabric. So there is no way that the Japanese print fabrics will work, which is really unfortunate because they're so pretty. So Dumbo it is. Okay, now on to mock-up. We have a bodice. Okay, we have a bodice mock-up. And actually I am pretty happy with how this is doing so far. So the biggest issue that I'm seeing is that the shoulders are ridiculously wide. It's a commercial pattern. I don't understand what human being commercial patterns use as their block. Like I literally cannot comprehend what linebacker they used for all of their pattern blocks because they are always immense. So this has to come up significantly because the seam should be right here where my finger is and uh, right now it would be an inch and a half past that I think. So yeah I have to cut that in a lot. I think that doing that will actually help solve one of the other issues I'm having where I think you can see right now there's a lot of excess fabric right here. Now that said I mean by the time we get here honestly this is in the right place. So I don't know in fact if anything, it almost seems a little low under the armpits. Because the thing is, for sleeves, you really want that armpit to be pretty much like right up there in your armpit, because that's actually going to give you the biggest range of motion. So it is possible, honestly, that that needs to come in up more, but it definitely needs to come in here significantly. And the other thing that I'm going to do is just, this is a really high neckline, I feel like. I'm making this as a summer dress, and I really love the sweetheart shape, but taking this down to where it'll be seam allowance is still just really high. So I think I'm gonna take this down so that the point is like about here. So probably take another three quarters of an inch or so off of it, and then plus seam allowance. And I think that that will also solve the fact that right now it's a little bubbly right there because I have a really significant curve between the apex of my bust and the top and so taking it down just a little bit means that that's going to be nice and fitted on my like upper chest neckline area and so yeah the really big question is going to be under the arm whether I need to recut it or not because everything else honestly is pretty darn great. These darts do need to come in a little bit more. They're just ending in the wrong place but the dart itself fits really nicely. The waist is like perfect. I mean even the length I think actually the back might be a skosh long. No I think we're okay actually even on the back. Yeah, I think we're okay. And so this was me not lengthening the bodice anywhere except for right here. This is where I added an inch. I didn't add anything to the back at all because my back is shorter than my front and I didn't add anything in the length anywhere else in the bodice. So like, yeah, I mean, that was a pretty well fitted pattern to be honest. I am pretty impressed. I was also, I did up all the seams. Oh, that's something else I need to talk to you about because I did up all the seams and I was able to pull this on over my head, which is great. Uh, when I was cutting out this mock-up, I discovered that this pattern doesn't make a lot of sense. So the pattern is designed with functional back buttons that stop at the waist. So in other words, the back of the bodice buttons but the waistline where it meets the skirt does not open. So it actually has a, like two or three inches extra of fabric that's meant to be folded back and used as like the buttonhole area facing for the center back. That doesn't make any sense to me. That's a lot of extra work for decorative buttons that will get caught in your hair. Like, yeah, so I took that out. I'm just gonna go with the center back seam. If I really feel like it, I'll put decorative buttons on there, but like, I don't feel like it, because again, those get caught in my hair. So yeah, no buttons up the back. And then the functional closure on this dress is designed to be side seam snaps. That doesn't make sense either, because 
snaps in a place where it gets a lot of movement, they're just gonna pop open. Now maybe if you're wearing like a 1940s girdle with this, where it's really holding everything in, then maybe you won't have as much movement, but I'm not doing that. So I'm gonna have a lot of movement and snaps are just gonna open. So I was thinking I would add an invisible zipper on the side seam, but here we are with a nicely fitted bodice top and no opening at all. And I was able to pull it on over my head. So I think we're gonna do my old thing of like with a lot of those jumper dresses and stuff that I made last year of not actually having a closure and just pulling it on over my head and being fine because I like that plan. And I also don't have a zipper that matches this fabric, so I'd have to use a white one or I'd have to go to Joanne's and then I don't have time to go to Joanne's. So, uh, yeah, happy with how things are going. I am going to take in this shoulder and then just decide, I guess, about this. I am also wondering, like, once I take in the shoulder, if I add a dart here, maybe that would help the underarm potentially being too low. So, We'll see, maybe that's an option, but overall, nice mock-up. All right, I have made the adjustments, taking in the shoulders, taking down the neckline. Hopefully I didn't take a little too far. And I'm realizing that I don't think it's necessarily a dart that I need here, but it is actually quite large under the armpits. So I need to take in this seam. That's why I've put this on inside out. I need to take in these seams under the armpits. And I think that that will probably get rid of what would wind up being a dart, I'm hoping. So I'm not sure exactly how much needs to come out there, but I think it's like almost a good two inches that'll basically just come up from like about here where it does seem, well, okay, maybe it's a little big there, from the waist where it totally fits and just taper it in up to the armpits and hopefully, yeah, that will solve the issue there of that gapping. But otherwise I think I'm in a pretty good place. That is so much better under the arms. I think that's really pretty close, but I am still getting this excess here. So I think it would be beneficial to take another small dart, even though that's three darts going into the same bust point. It feels like a lot, but like, I don't feel like messing with this to have less darts and rotate everything and all of that when I wanna get this project done. So yeah, this, one of these darts, again, doesn't end in the right place because bus points over here, the darts end over here. So that's an issue. So they will have to curve a little, but I don't think because this dart goes into this side seam, I don't think there's any way for me to basically like get rid of this by doing more here. It's entirely possible that I could get rid of this by taking it all out here, but then that would be a pretty honking dart and again, I just don't really feel like messing with all of that dart rotation stuff. I think it would just be easier to take this little like half inch each side by the time it gets to the arms eye, just take a little dart out there and get the excess out that way. It will also help the neckline to lay a little flatter, so I'm all for that. So yeah, we'll have one extra dart, but I don't think that's a problem. So let's go ahead and get that sewn up. Okay, so actually slight change of plans as far as the darts go because I decided to go ahead and just undo this bottom dart that was like not in the right place anyway and just see what would happen with the rotation. And so I have this just really poorly pinned right now because it's very difficult to pin under your armpit. But I have the side seam just kind of pinned and then I pulled it up and I wound up taking only like a dart that was maybe twice the size of what I was going to do anyway and just taking that out right up here and then a little of this will get cut off but it's so much better I mean like look at that that's really nice and smooth and I've just got the little dart here now and then the dart here nothing going this way and I think that is so much better. I do think, however, what this has done is it's actually given me enough fabric up in the armpit up here that I can get it a little closer to my armpit and have it fit better for when the sleeve goes in. And so I think I am gonna go ahead and recut the back because it's just too low in the back. It should be like at least a half inch higher, if not more, because the sleeve itself should be sitting, like where the seam is, should be sitting at least as high as the fabric is currently going, if not higher, just to get that nicer, tighter fit under the armpit for more range of motion. So yeah, this is definitely the dart placement that I need. And then I will figure out exactly 
how that's going to go together here. But yeah, I will have to recut the backs, unfortunately. I haven't even, to be honest, I haven't even looked at the upper back. Upper back looks pretty decent in the monitor. Oh no, it's got a little excess right here, which is kind of what I figured would happen because my back is curved above kind of like my bra strap area here. My back curves in pretty significantly and uh, this has a straight center back seam. So yeah, I do have some excess to take out in that center back, but that is not a big deal at all. So I'll take that out and taper that down. But yeah, happy with this new dart placement. So I am going to figure out how to copy this sort of thing on this side. And I think that means I can go ahead and cut into the fabric. So yeah, I'm actually going to wind up raising the back seven eighths of an inch by the time it gets to this seam. And then it'll taper in here because once I pinned it all nice and flat, that was the difference. And with the center back at the top, this is how much it's gonna come out. So it's actually almost two inches and that will taper down about part way. I made a mark, right, that pink mark right there. And so it'll taper down to there. So I'm realizing as I am cutting out all of the actual Dumbo fabric here that I am gonna be left with like a kind of weird short amount of fabric after I cut everything out, like probably about, I don't know, half a yard, something like that, of fabric left over. Because what I've cut right now, I have this much left, and I have cut all three of the skirt panels, and I have cut all but a half of a panel of the ruffle, and then I've cut all of the bodice panels except for one back piece, and I have not cut the sleeves. I also haven't cut any pockets out yet, which obviously we have to have pockets. So, there's a lot of this left. The sleeve is really only going to take up probably about this much. So that leaves basically, hmm, I don't know. I guess I should wait. My kind of want is to make the ruffle fuller. And right now the ruffle is a one and a half times as much fabric ruffle I like a two times ruffle, like that would be nice. That would mean having one and a half extra ruffle panels here. So basically I still have just half a width more to cut out for the ruffle. I've already done four ruffles. There should be four and a half total with my new change to this pattern of adding the third skirt panel. And I just kinda, I kinda wonder if I can maybe make one more strip and then make that other half strip a full strip. But of course, I haven't done the sleeves yet. And there's always the chance of like, what if I need that? So I guess what I could do, gears turning, I guess what I could do is I could start putting together the skirt. I could cut out the pockets because I don't have to do the pockets out of Dumbo print fabric, of course. In fact, a lot of times I actually find that with printed fabric like this, printed cotton, that it is better to do like a light blue, for example, for my pockets as opposed to doing the Dumbo because you never know if you're going to get a Dumbo that will like show through from the pocket. So frankly, I should have, I've got a whole scrap, a bin of like scrap cotton and I should have some light blue that I can use for pocket scraps. And then I do need to cut out that other bodice piece. And then I guess before finalizing my decision with the ruffle, I should probably figure out the sleeves and get them cut out and then go back to the ruffle afterwards, which is fine. I, I can get to the ruffle later, but yeah, I think I'll go ahead and I will do that and kind of leave the ruffle for last to see if I can make it a little bit fuller of a ruffle. So please forgive my post-show hair and makeup that's going on here, but it has been a weekend. So uh, Ragtime opened this weekend. We had Tech Week all this last week, and then we opened on Friday and have now had three performances and a preview, and I haven't had a lot of time to sew. So I am going to kind of extend this video just a little bit, mostly because this is a sponsored video and sponsored videos come with deadlines. So I really want to get this done this week, but it's Sunday night right now and the dress isn't done. However, it is looking a lot more like a dress. 
So like we're not terribly far away from where this needs to be. This has very much been assembled in the usual way which is why I have not stopped and talked to you about any of this because everything so far has been exactly like what I've done for pretty much all other dresses. This is a three panel skirt like I mentioned before. There are pockets that are put in the usual way on either side of the front panel here and I did actually make it so that the front panel is slightly less gathered than the back two panels so the pockets are actually sitting like about here on the dress I believe it's only an inch and a quarter forward from where the side seam is so they're really quite close to the sides which is great and the bodice is flat lined with cotton sateen and then darts were done and it was sewn together and it was attached to skirt. So that's really all we've got. The skirt is just gathered. Very, very, very simple. The one thing that I'm not sure about here, and I'm going to find out about tomorrow, is that when I marked the new bust dart, like this upper dart right here, when I marked that, it was not dart shaped. It was all over the place, not on the grain, like very, very weird. So I made these match up with where the point was and where the side edges were on the dart but from there I just did like a straight line like a normal dart so that may not work because honestly they're looking really pointy <laughs> do you see that like really really pointy so I have a feeling when I put this on tomorrow I haven't put this on yet and I have a feeling when I put it on that may have to change one of the other things that I did was I was realizing as I was looking at the mock-up I didn't tell this to you yet but I was realizing that the front just seemed a little bit short like where the bottom of the mock-up was in the center front seemed like the waist which meant that I needed to extend for seam allowance so I did extend the center front of the waist half inch and then I tapered it out to about here so this is the side seam it's about here a few inches from the side seam so I'm hoping that that will have worked I mean now we've got the skirt waist on it so I'm gonna hang this up for tonight so that a I mean the skirts not gonna fall out there's nothing to fall out they're straight panels so that's kind of the nice thing about doing a straight panel skirt you don't have to worry about the bias falling out of a skirt so that's super handy but I'm just gonna hang this up I have not done the ruffle on the skirt yet because of what I mentioned before of whether or not I can cut an extra ruffle so the first thing that I'm going to do tomorrow it's not actually going to be trying it on I am going to be mocking up a sleeve I think I'm going to have to widen the sleeve pattern just a little bit because I did make this arms eye well I made the arms eye taller but then I also made it higher up here so I'll have to do some measurements and see if the sleeve pattern is anything remotely correct as is if so I will just use that plain and simple as my mock-up I mean I'll cut it out of fabric obviously but I will just use the exact sleeve pattern as my sleeve and we'll see if that will work but that kind of lets me kill two birds with one stone because I can set the sleeve in probably at the same time as like checking this pointy dart and seeing if that works I mean obviously the dart does go into the arms eye hmm that's true Okay, never mind. I am going to try this on first without a sleeve. I'll probably mm, cut the sleeve and make the sleeve, but not set the sleeve. And then I'll just see if this is off or if it's on. Maybe I got it right. I'm kind of guessing that it's on in the armpit, but it might not be on between the armpit and the point, or even that the point might not be on. We'll see. So anyway, I am still hoping to finish this tomorrow because at this point, all that I have to do is hem the ruffle and attach it, potentially add another panel or two to it, but hem it and attach it. That's pretty easy. I mean, gather it to attach it, obviously, the sleeves, and then I have to bind the neckline. So yeah, not too bad. We're pretty close and I'm excited to how this is looking already. I mean, like it's looking like a darn good jumper dress right now, but I am actually adding sleeves to this one as per this 40s inspired pattern. So anyway, I will see you tomorrow. Good night. So here is the dress right now without any of the sleeves. I was right that the bust darts are not quite right, but they're very close. They're actually just really pointy. So I'm just going to curve them out a bit and I'll be good. So let's go try on a sleeve. So as it turns out, I am going to be making some changes to this pattern, mostly just because I measured the width around the bottom here and it's way too small. This is actually a pleat that gets taken out so that it winds up being quite narrow at the bottom. You can see right here, it's narrow at the bottom because that pleat and then it puffs up at the top. 
And because of that pleat, this is way too small. It winds up being about like 14 inches, whereas I need 16 inches. So I'm adding one inch to each of the sides here. Now I haven't quite decided like this measurement because the pleat only goes to here. This measurement does fit my arm. So I think I am still going to add a little bit here because it seems weird that I would just add it there. That would like change the whole angle. So I think I'm going to add a little bit to the top here. And then maybe what I'll do is I'll actually just kind of split it down the middle and widen the whole thing. This just seems very narrow. And I know that we get that a lot of times with commercial patterns. There is plenty of room around here for me to still have gathering into the arm's eye, but it just seems so narrow. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna widen it out a little bit, kind of like slash it from here, go up and then tilt it open so that it is still more being added here than it is up at the top. Just, I don't know, I think that's gonna be the best method. So this is what I'm talking about. I've now slit this so that it can actually open up. Now, I don't think I'm gonna add the full two inches in here. I think I will still add a little bit of it tapered out like this, but right now I think we're at about like a one and a quarter, one and a half inches separated out right here. And then I'll just add the little bit of extra right there because this is such a slope or it was such a slope that it almost acts like a little gusset up here. That's what happens when you get like super angled. But yeah, we're gonna keep a little bit of that gusset and then this shape just looks a lot, a lot better. So this is what I'm going for for the sleeve. So I'm not sure if I screwed up in like the mock-up slash creating phase of the bodice or what, but it has dawned on me now that I've put this sleeve on that 40s shoulders were wider. In the 40s, they used shoulder pads. And so that was probably why the shoulder was as wide as it was, because what I'm getting now, and I think you can see it here, but do you see how it's pulling right here? And I think it's because I don't have enough bodice there because that was where I cut it away from. And it's also, it just seems like it's coming farther up here on my shoulder than a 40 shoulder should sit, which should probably have had a seam there. So I screwed that up by thinking in both modern and also Victorian and Edwardian and everything sensitivities because that's what I've been working in lately. I haven't been doing 40s or any other things that have wider shoulders like 1860s or 1830s or something like that. So yeah, it's also like, it is, I think because of that, it's actually feeling very in my armpit, like probably too much so. I don't know. I mean, I'm getting range of motion, okay, but I feel like that's gonna bother me that it's just too much in there. I do think that the sleeve shape itself is quite cute. I was actually kind of worried because the one other thing that I did to this that I forgot to mention was I extended the length of the sleeve down here by I think an inch and a quarter because otherwise it just would have been really, really short on my arm and I don't like really short sleeves on my arm. So I made it longer and then when I like held it up before I had done the gathers and before I had set the sleeve, I just kind of put it on and the sleeve head looked so long. It looked so silly. So uh, yeah, I'm glad that it actually worked itself out once the gathers were in. I think that's quite cute with the tuck and everything. And the sleeve, like the, you know, the size feels really good. It's just right in here, this front part of the armpit that definitely is feeling tight. So I don't know, I don't know how to fix that. I don't know if it's that I need maybe more sleeve. Like if I had, I think that this, that this part, the bodice needs to get cut down a little bit so that it's not so in my armpit. And then the sleeve, I feel like maybe needs more fabric. Maybe I can add more to the sleeve since I took it away from the body. But even, I mean, like, it doesn't look like it's going into my armpit on this side. But even on this side, now that I have the sleeve on, I feel it pulling a little bit. Probably just the sleeve is pulling it. I also, I did taper in the darts, but they're not quite as tapered as it needs to be. They're still, like, a tiny, tiny point. I haven't pressed them, so it could go away. But, yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to undo the seam here from about, like, here where it starts to pull 
down probably to the side seam and then put it back on and see how much of a gap there is because that would be what is pulling. Like that would be what needs to be filled in basically. If it's something that I can just do with the seam allowance that is existing on here, that's great because, you know, maybe I could take a smaller seam allowance or I could cut the sleeve a little bit bigger to accommodate that. But yeah, right now it is definitely not right. Oh my gosh, that is so much better undoing that seam. But as you can tell, when I move my arm around, I'm getting like full on flash of skin. So it's not just a seam allowance thing because I need to, I think, curve the sleeve head out similarly to this bodice. So I'm not really sure how to change the shape, but it needs to go a lot further out. So I'm going to need another sleeve mock up here because this is just not gonna work I mean that is significant right now like that is right now we've got a gap of like at least three quarters of an inch right here so and not to mention seam allowance so we're yeah not the right shape the back of it I think is fine the back's totally great but the front this is not the right sleeve shape so um yeah time for another mock-up so this is what I'm looking at here. Basically, it's this section that needs to change, but also the gathers were not going far enough forward. So frankly, this needs a little bit more too, because I want the gathers to go to here. They only went to here, so a little bit of a change. So basically, like, it's going to start here. It's going to taper up like this real fast and then it's going to come back and meet in here because that should give me more gathers. So just all that's going to come more forward and hopefully that will fix the problem. Oh my gosh, you guys, that is so much better. Look at this. It's not pulling, nothing like that. I've got great range of motion. It looks cute. It's got all that puffness up here and then the fitted part down here. Oh my gosh so much better the only thing that i'm noticing that could be an issue with this one is that like the front seems longer than the back so i think i'm just going to pull up a little bit here just cut that extra off this hasn't been hemmed or anything either so obviously this will be a bit shorter than this because it does have to be hemmed but yeah we have a winner so just going out that little bit in that section such a difference i mean yeah, I'm loving this now. I'm definitely gonna have to save this sleeve for like other uses because I think it's really cute. I haven't seen a sleeve that has this little box pleat in the bottom before and then the puffs up top, but I really, really like it. So thank you, Simplicity, for that idea, even if the original pattern was maybe not the best, but very excited for this one. So now I can go ahead and cut the sleeves out of the Dumbo fabric. I'm not gonna line the sleeves. They're just gonna be the Dumbo fabric. So I'm gonna cut those out and then I can determine in if I have extra fabric left to do more ruffle pieces and then I can get the ruffle on so we're like getting getting through it now that we have the sleeve done so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and make some Dumbo sleeves the sleeves are on and they're looking very very cute they do still need to be hemmed at the bottom but I did fix that one bit where it was like dipping down in front and the unfortunate thing that I'm noticing now that I have it on that I didn't notice before without the sleeves on is that a, I think that the front where I kind of extended it, I don't think I needed to have done that, at least not all the way. I think it's maybe a little bit too low in the front, but where it's really too low is the sides. So I did not extend the side length any. This is literally the length of the pattern. I had extended up here a little bit, but not down here. And it is definitely dipping below my waist by like a good half inch on the side. So that's really annoying. I don't know whether I'm gonna fix it or not for this video, we'll see. I do still have to do the ruffle on the skirt. So that's gonna be the next thing is do the ruffle. Actually, maybe I'll hem the sleeves first. I'll hem the sleeves, then I'll do the ruffle. I do also need to bind the neckline here. I'm just going to bind the neckline with bias tape and turn over the inside and sew that down by hand. So that's probably gonna be the last thing that I do just cause then I can like do it on the couch and then I'll show you the final. But the ruffle is going to be really simple. I did have enough fabric to cut out a two to one ratio ruffle. So basically for every one panel that's in the skirt upper portion, I will have two ruffle panels. So two widths of the fabric to every one width of the fabric. So that's 
really fun. So right now I have the four that I had originally cut out. I have those four already sewn together. I have to add the other two and join them all together in like a loop. And then I'm going to hem the entire thing. And then I am going to do long gathering stitches on the machine, pull those up and attach it to the bottom of the skirt. So let's get started. Overall, I'm really quite pleased with how this turned out. I did not fix the waist. I don't know if I'm going to because now I feel like it is in the right place. I have covered it up with this vintage belt, but here's the waist. I mean, it's it's really close at the sides. Like, if it needs to come up, it's maybe a quarter of an inch. It's it's very close. And actually, the front I think is great. So I'm glad that I extended the front the half inch longer. I don't know how the sides became longer than they seemed like in the mock-up form, but especially when it's with the belt, like it's not far enough off of my waist that a belt won't cover that seam anyway. Whereas like with the purple gingham dress that I fixed up a few weeks ago, that one was so far off that it hung below a belt, for example. So overall, I cannot wait to wear this a lot. I think that it's just gonna be really, really great for summer. It's also like the perfect 4th of July dress, which is very fun. I do think that maybe the darts could have used a little bit more work because they're still just a tiny, tiny bit pointy. And also, honestly, the arm's eye underneath right in here probably did wind up just a skosh high. It's not bothering me now, so I'll see if it bothers me like as I wear it. If it is, then it's something that I could just release a little bit of the gathering and drop that seam a little lower and the sleeves will still fit, so that's good. But yeah, overall, I mean, I love the ruffle. It is so cute, it's so summery, it's just very fun. I love the sleeve shape. I really am gonna have to use this sleeve shape again because I think it's very cute and very flattering. Like. It's a puff, but not too puffy. And then it's fitted at the bottom, but like not into a band. And I don't know, I just love it. It's so fun. So overall, I do recommend this pattern. I mean, obviously I made a lot of changes to it, but it was a really great jumping off point and it gave me the inspiration to start and to finish like where I wanted to, to get that pattern, if that makes sense at all. So yeah, I did really have fun with this and I'm super excited to incorporate this into my summer wardrobe. If you liked this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and other costuming content out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram. So please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Sharon, Julie, and Mirage, and also a humongous thank you to Skillshare once again for sponsoring this video. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!